This is Chris. Chris was a Special Forces Recon Marine. In 2008, Chris was on a mission in Iraq when a suicide bomber detonated in his face. The force of the blast launched him down a flight of stairs and slammed his back against the wall. That's when his low back pain started, but the real game changer happened a couple of years later in Afghanistan when the truck he was riding in got blown up by a roadside bomb. Since that time, he said his low back pain was constant and excruciating. He said his quality of life was in a downward spiral. His MRI showed that his L4, L5 intervertebral disc was badly dehydrated. All the VA could offer him was narcotic pain medications until he was ready to have his lumbar spine fused, but they encouraged him to put that off as long as possible. You see, as soon as you do the first fusion, you have to do additional fusions every five years or so. Chris's dad is a doctor and a colleague of mine. They came to my office together three and a half years ago. They wanted me to inject stem cells directly into his dehydrated lumbar disc. Now, if I were to stop there, what do you think I said to him? Some of you might be thinking, I said, I'm sorry, Chris, I wish I could help you, but we're just not there yet. There's a lot of great minds working on this, but there's still a lot of work to be done, and you'll just have to wait. Others might be thinking, I said, here's an application to be a participant in our study. First, you have to pass the strict inclusion-exclusion criteria. I must tell you, Chris, if you're enrolled, you might end up receiving placebo. And still others might be thinking, I said, absolutely, we can treat you, Chris, at my offshore clinic in the Caribbean. <laughs> Why is it when we think of stem cells in the United States, our mind immediately jumps to obstacles? Well, for the answer to that question, all you have to do is look at the history of stem cell medicine in this country. First, all the talk was about embryonic stem cells. Well, it can be argued that an embryo is, in fact, a human life, so there's a very real ethical obstacle. Then all the buzz was about how scientists had successfully created a stem cell in a laboratory by taking a skin cell and replacing the DNA with that of a human egg. This is called an induced pluripotent stem cell. The issue there is it's very complex to perform and there's a lot that can go wrong. So now we have a technical obstacle. Then scientists realized that if you run a patient's blood through a machine, you can isolate a few stem cells send them to a laboratory, and over a period of months, culture expands them, so now you have millions of them to use therapeutically. The issue is, at this point, the FDA steps in and says, those cells you grew in a lab, yeah, we consider them to be a drug and a non-FDA-approved drug. So now we have a legal obstacle. When I was 16, I did an outward-bound mountaineering course in southern Colorado. Early into the course, our group encountered an obstacle. We looked to our instructor, fully expecting him to tell us exactly what to do. He looked at us and said, there are no problems, only solutions. Turned on his heels, left us to figure it out. I love that. On the spot, I made it my life philosophy. There are no problems, only solutions. It sounds very inspirational, but really, it's just a nice way to say, when I set my mind to something, I refuse to take no for an answer. Stem cells are primitive cells that have the unique ability, when they divide, to, to either self-renew, turn into new versions of itself, or differentiate, turn into target tissue cells. Most people know that. What we've learned in recent years is that populations of stem cells exist in virtually every tissue in the body. This is a schematic illustration showing the different types of stem cells that exist in the various tissues of the knee in the bone, the cartilage, the ligament, the synovial fluid, and the fat pad. Their primary role is to maintain the health of their microenvironment, in this case, the knee. They've been called patient-specific drugstores for injured tissues. They have the ability to sense when there's been an injury, and in response, they release proteins that control inflammation, heal invading microbes, and signal the healing of damaged tissue. Anytime you have healing after an injury, it's a stem cell-mediated event. Degeneration and pain occur when the stem cells in a particular location either lose the ability to function properly or if the population becomes depleted. But you still have plenty of stem cells in other tissues, like your bone marrow and fat. So here's the thing. If we take stem cells from one area of the body, such as the bone marrow and fat, and inject them into the problem area of the same person on the same day, this is called an autologous tissue transfer. The word autologous means donor and recipient are the same person. Now we're in the same category as a hair transplant, 
perfectly legal in the United States. <laughs> there are no problems, only solutions. We've completely bypassed the ethical, the technical, and the legal obstacles. It was right in front of us all along, but we're, in medicine, we're so mesmerized by all things complex, it's easy to overlook a simple solution. When I was younger, I lived and breathed rock climbing. When I was wrapping up my first year in naturopathic medical school, I was planning my dream trip to France, the birthplace of modern sport climbing. I wanted to do all the classic hard routes, so I was training like crazy in the climbing gym. One night, I was doing this hard cross-through move, and I felt this revolting pop in my shoulder. I'd torn the cartilage. I saw a surgeon. He said he could t cut out the torn cartilage with an arthroscope. He said it would help in the short term, but it would cause me problems later in life. This didn't appeal to me one bit, but I was determined to go on my climbing trip. Researching my options, this was in 1996, when you actually had to talk to people. <laughs> <laughs> I learned about regenerative injection therapy, also called prolotherapy. The injection of natural substances that are simultaneously nutritive and mildly irritating directly into the damaged structure in order to trick the body into thinking that it's been re-injured, thereby launching the body's natural healing response. I had it done to me by this man who went on to become my teacher and my mentor. It resulted in a cure. My climbing trip to France was splendid, and my life path had materialized before me. During my hospital residency years, I volunteered in a homeless shelter halfway house in Bridgeport, Connecticut, doing prolotherapy on the residents at no charge for the, pa the residents who had pain. It was great for them, it was great for me. I got experience and they got free treatment. This is Laura. Laura is a NASA materials engineer. I'd helped Laura's damaged knee quite a bit with the new biologic version of prolotherapy, platelet-rich plasma. The use, of blood plate, the use of growth factors from a patient's own blood. In 2009, Laura handed me a stack of scientific articles on the use of bone marrow stem cells for the treatment of arthritis, mostly animal studies. She wanted me to inject stem cells into her knee. I'd heard of it, but I didn't know how to aspirate bone marrow. I told her I had a friend in St. Louis who did it. She could go to him. She said, I don't want your friend to do it. I want you to do it. <laughs> I said, but Laura, I don't know how. She said, so, learn. <laughs> I mean, she may as well have said to me, Harry, come on, you know, there are no problems, only solutions. I, to say no would have been a breach of my own credo. I found a surgeon willing to teach me bone marrow aspiration. The indications and injection methods are identical to prolotherapy and platelet-rich plasma, which I'd been doing full time for eight years, so it was an easy transition, but, the outcomes were so superior, it instantly became 100% of my practice. Back then, there was just a small handful of doctors doing autologous stem cells. There was very little in the literature, certainly nothing how-to. There were no trainings going on, and there was nothing close to a consensus on how to do it. So I spent the better part of 2011 traveling through North, Central, and South America, visiting those with the most experience gathering pearls and making friends along the way. I'll tell you about one leg of my travels. I visited Carlos Cecilio Brat in San Carlos, Venezuela, a very busy practice in a very small town. Dr. Brat's famous in all of South America. His clinic is open from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. He has two teams of staff. Each team does an eight-hour shift, except him. He did 16-hour days every day I was with him. His procedure room has a dozen treatment tables separated by curtains. He goes from one to the next, placing a simple 18-gauge hypodermic needle into the sternum to aspirate bone marrow stem cells for an injection. Extremely simple and inexpensive. He's done tens of thousands of autologous stem cell treatments this way. From Venezuela, I went directly to Panama City to visit the Stem Cell Institute, a state-of-the-art, multi-million dollar laboratory that grows stem cells for the treatment of a broad spectrum of disorders. Vastly complex and high-tech, what I saw at the Stem Cell Institute was the extreme opposite end of the spectrum from what I saw at Dr. Broad's. What I took away from visiting these two clinics back-to-back -back was the Stem Cell Institute seemed to get consistently excellent results, and so did Dr. Broad. A picture started forming in my mind of the balance between simplicity, which has the potential to be safer and less expensive, and complexity, which has the potential for superior outcomes. 
a sort of three-dimensional golden ratio of cost, benefit, and risk. I wanted to create an elegant constellation of all the skills I've learned from these fabulous mentors. My mission became to find my golden ratio. During those years, I was traveling every two months to Ecuador to work with orthopedic surgeon Dr. Carlos Chiriboga. We had a partnership where I was responsible for harvesting and preparing stem cells from a patient's bone marrow and fat. I'd hand them off to Dr. Carlos. He would then use them in conjunction with uh, traditional orthopedic surgeries. I got indoctrinated in surgical sterile technique and gained a far richer understanding of human anatomy. The final piece to my golden ratio puzzle was given to me by Gary. Gary had been a patient of mine for years. I'd helped him quite a bit with his low back pain using stem cells and platelet-rich plasma, but he still had this nagging midline pain worse bending forward. We got an MRI and found that his lumbar discs were dehydrated and degenerated. In order for stem cells to do any good, they'd have to be injected directly into the disc. The problem was, injecting discs requires x-ray guidance, and I only did ultrasound guidance. I suggested to Gary that he go to a friend of mine in Texas who did x-ray guided injection of stem cells. <laughs> I even offered to go with him. <laughs> Would any of you care to guess what he said to me? <laughs> I don't want your friend to do it. I want you to do it. Gary's an extraordinary person. I mean, this is a guy who really views life as a bouquet of solutions. Learning and getting set up to do x-ray guidance is not an easy transition. It is a huge, expensive, enormously time-consuming endeavor in an environment that is extremely hostile to naturopathic doctors like me. I honestly believe that to back down from the challenge because I was intimidated, and I was intimidated, would have been an act of betrayal to Gary, to all my patients, and to all my teachers and mentors. Thanks to these mentors, I learned x-ray guided injection. I then built a clinic to accommodate an x-ray surgical suite. And with that, my golden ratio had materialized. Which brings us back to Chris. Three and a half years ago, I aspirated bone marrow from Chris's iliac crest. We concentrated the stem cells. I injected them into his L4, L5 intervertebral disc, into his epidural space, and into the facet joints and ligaments of his low back. Two months later, Chris reported a 90% improvement in his pain that continues today. I saw him last month. He came to the clinic because he injured his knee during a jiu-jitsu competition that he had won. <laughs> <laughs> Chris is among the over 2,000 patients I've treated with their own stem cells over the last six years. If you're living with pain, and you want stem cells injected into the problem area, don't take no for an answer. You can do it today, legally, in the United States. In the last two years, it's exploded with popularity, and there's doctors in just about every state doing it. There's a lot of variants, so do your homework, find one you like, one whose golden ratio resonates with yours, and take back your life. Thank you.